Let's take a look at Ireland's Deirdre Gogarty, who moved to the U.S., Lafayette, Louisiana, 93, her first pro fight in 91. Get this, her first fight was for the Women's Irish Lightweight Championship. Her opponent had 21 fights. Deirdre won. So, uh, yeah, myself uh, and the committee members, Sinead Brazel, uh, Natalie Kelly, Joanna Byrne couldn't be here, and uh, David Thornton, who's somewhere in the back there. Um, I'm very happy for you to, to attend here today. Um, the reason why I'm bringing you today is, uh, so basically on the 8th of June 1985, uh, Barry McGuigan's hand was raised in Loftus Road as champion of the world, and a young 15-year-old girl in her home in Warrington watched on TV in awe, and a forever burning fire in women's boxing was lit. Deirdre lived in a house where there was, she had seven siblings, but she always said, said, said she felt like the black sheep in the family. She was the youngest, and she said one Saturday, um, they were watching TV, they were watching ballet, and she was like, oh, she, was, she was bored out of her head. And her mom was like, with her auntie going, oh, let's put on the, the, the Irish man that's boxing, and it was Barry McGuigan against Pedraza and, and Barry like obviously ended up winning the, the world title like that night but she, that was like the moment that like changed everything for her she was like so see so she cycled there from from draw to grammar school up this road every day so she'd leave that school so she cycled school finish school and cycling to draw that and she cycled to her father's practice in the middle of draw that it's mad that she wanted to do it and like when it didn't exist. Boxing was men in it, and that, that was it. There was nothing else. Um, there was no pathway. There was nothing. It was actually like illegal, technically illegal, because the IBA didn't let women box. And so, if you did box, like you weren't insured, you weren't sanctioned, you weren't nothing. Like commissions, like British Boxing Board Control, whatnot, like weren't given women uh, professional licenses either. Women's boxing did not exist in 1985. An amateur or professional level in Ireland. But somehow this girl carved out a pathway for herself. This young woman was Deirdre Gogarty from here in Drogheda. As a young student, her day would start out at home just yards away from Drogheda Grammar School in Mornington and Mead. And she would cycle at the end of her school day all the way down the Marsh Road into Drogheda and to her father's dental practice on the Wealth and Key in Dyer Street. She would look out the window of the waiting room in her father's practice and gaze out at boxing coach Joan Leonard from Drottle Box Club here, watching him come to and fro every day. But she'd cycle, cycle, and she'd go in, into that waiting room over there. And Drottle Boxing Club was there. See that corner? It was a big shed, like a big warehouse. So Deirdre used to walk, look out the window every day. And Joe Leonard, the coach, She'd watch him going in and out every day and eventually she mustered up the courage when she was about 17. She got up and, and walked, walked over and says, you know, can I can I come in? And back then like it was so um obscene that a that a woman would box. He thought she was there to, to, to like meet her boyfriend, like. Eventually Joe kind of said, right, you can come in and train, but he had this lo loyalty to the men, like. Because you can come in and that was like seen as a massive moment because he didn't have to, not that it was seen as like um, monstrous like to do that, like it was like how could you do, be so cruel to her like letting her train with men and and so eventually um, she went in every day and that's what that was what started to happen then with her father as well and her family used to think oh she must be seeing someone because she's going into the box room she must be watching them train um, that's how far the gap was back then like people just couldn't couldn't comprehend it like so that's where it all started and Deirdre to this day says she will be forever thankful to the late Joe Leonard for turning the key of her career. After moving into Dublin she waited outside St. Sabres Boxing Club one night, wanted to train and convinced John McCormack to let her in. 
after John's brother the late Pat McCormick harnessed a young Deirdre's talent for four years in the club, she finally got her first bout on a kickboxing show in 1991 against Amory Griffin sitting next to me here at the back of Shannon Arms Hotel in Limerick. Although the bout was unsanctioned, it would go down as the first boxing bout between two Irish women on Irish soil. After various smokers in the UK, Deirdre made the difficult decision to move to Louisiana to turn professional with Bo Wilford as her manager and her coach. This would make Deirdre Ireland's first ever female professional boxer. This weekend marks the UK's first all-female boxing card with Clarissa Shields versus Savannah Marshall. But on the 20th of April 1995, Deirdre Gokley fought Laura Serrano on the world's first all-female professional boxing card, which also fe featured the island's Deirdre Nelson as well. On the 16th of March 1996, Deirdre took on a stone-heavy opponent in Christy Martin, a hard-hitting Don King promoted machine. Although it was a loss in Deirdre's record, it was a win for women's boxing. This went down as the first all-female bout to feature on a pay-per-view event. The fight took place on Mike Tyson and Frank Bruno's undercard, which went on to sell 1.4 million pay-per-views in the US alone. This would change the face of women's boxing forever. Not long after this fight, a young 11-year-old girl from Bray wrote a letter to Deirdre on how she was finding it difficult to get fights in Ireland. One of the last sentences in this letter said, maybe someday they'll even let us box in the Olympics. This of course was young Katie Taylor, who at six, 16 years later on would win gold in women's first appearance in the boxing in the Olympics. After two failed previous attempts on the 2nd of March 1997, Deirdre finally achieved her ultimate goal in becoming featherweight champion of the world in beating Con Bonnie Canino in Florida. This would cement her legacy as Ireland's first ever female professional world boxing champion. Since retiring in 1998, Deirdre has been recognised by the world of boxing by being inducted into International Women's Boxing Hall of Fame in 2015. Deirdre has also been recognised by the Irish Emigration Museum at the Epic Museum, but yet has not been recognised in the place where it all started. We have a statue in this town of the legend, Olympic bronze medalist, Tony Soxburn, but yet we have nothing to signify or rec recognise Deirdre. Deirdre is our only professional legitimate boxing world champion, and she is Ireland's first female professional boxing world champion. This is why our committee has been formed to fundraise so that we can erect a statue of Deirdre Gogarty and Drada. We feel as a committee, by immortalising Deirdre in the town, this will inspire the dreams of the young generation coming through, not only in boxing but in other sports. To never give up on their dreams, no matter how difficult. We also feel it is only fair and important to recognise Deirdre for all she's done for moving to the US and making the difficult decision to leave families and friends behind. As Pat McCormick said all those years ago, Deirdre would be opening the door for women 10, 15 years from now. So we only think it's fitting that a statue of this icon is opened, the door for other people is erected. This is something that Drada can really, really be proud of. A GoFundMe has now gone live, uh, so we encourage everyone to please donate. We understand times are tough, but every donation, small or big, is greatly, greatly appreciated. We feel like the time is right now that we have an amateur world champion named Amy Broadhurst in Louth. We also have Kelly Harrington, an Olympic gold medalist. And of course, we have the pound for pound number one in Katie Taylor. And locally, we have Grace Conway sitting here, who's All-Ireland and silver uh, medalist for Europeans. And Brianna as well, Brianna Johnson, who's also All-Ireland champion. These are the people that are now coming through. So we feel that this is now the time uh, to erect the statue of Deirdre Gogany. So I'm just gonna pass you over now to uh, other committee member, uh, Natalie Kelly. Thank you all for being here. Um, I represent a group in Drogheda called the Drogheda Dolls and in a town of almost 50,000 people, um, the group holds 22,000 uh, members and they're all women. So I think that's why Kieran has me on board. Um, and I think it's very fitting because 2022 is the year of breaking the bias. And um, breaking the bias, I suppose, is a world free from discrimination 
from stereotypes and from bias and um, an inclusive world. And when Deirdre first, I, I will admit, I didn't know who Deirdre was when I got the call. And that's kind of very sad. Um, and um, it seems fitting that it's this year and everything has a time and a place. I know we fundamentally do raise funds for charities and causes, but everything has a time and a place in our community. And this is Deirdre's time and her place. And it's very fitting to have a statue for her. Um, as a woman, she empowered others to, and she paved the way for lots of women in our society um, to go on and do boxing. Um, and sport and look what happened last night like so it's all really positive for women in sport and is breaking the bias and stereotypical uh, things in uh, sport um, yeah so she's an inspiration she um, since learning about her she's so strong um, a true Drogheda doll and should be recognized as so um, I have a vision of um, where we want the statue to go, but we'll see if it gets there. Um, but I have a vision of uh, a mother and her child walking across and coming across the statue. And they look up and the child says, Ma'am, who's that? And she's proudly saying, well, this is Deirdre Govati, and she is uh, a Drogheda woman who won um, the uh, world... I'd have to get him to remind me, but the world featherweight uh, title because I have zero um, knowledge in boxing. But um, yeah, and imagine like you can picture that scene and the child like and the child being inspired that there is a statue, there's other statues in the town and they're all men. So I'm not against men, I'm just saying, like, you know, <laughs> we need our women up there. Um, but yeah, I just, in, in, there's an old probably... Uh, proverb and it's like um, nothing gets done till someone steps up to the table and Kieran has to be commended for stepping up to the table and um, bringing us all together as a committee and we as the Dada Dolls uh, team and will offer our 100% support and our heart in everything we do and we will 100% support the Deirdre uh, Gogarty legacy and get the statue up and it will happen. One thing I'm grateful of is that today is all the history that's come here today so obviously we have um, the first but Deirdre's opponent as well in the first fight between the two women on the island which is obviously Anne-Marie and she made all the way up to Clare also Deirdre's coach uh, John and obviously his late brother Pat uh, Christina McMahon who was the first on the island to get a nice a license with the Boxing in the world and also WC interim world champion. Um, so yeah, I'm really grateful for all the history here. But uh, the first person I pass over is, is to John McCormick. John, if you just want to tell us just your uh, memories of coaching Deirdre. When we had, when we got Deirdre into the gym for the first time, we were all looking at her, and obviously we were we never had girls there before, and we're looking at the girls saying. What is she trying to do? She's obviously, she has, she's not right in the head to be boxing because girls don't box. I was of the same opinion as everyone else that girls didn't box. Now I'm saying that because I come from a family of eight sisters and five brothers and all the girls fought better than the boys in our family. So I know girls do box, but to see someone doing her in the ring like Deirdre, she came down to the gym anyway and she was looking around the gym and I said to her, are you looking for something? She said, I was, I'm from Drogheda, but I was sent down to here to get a bit of boxing tuition from someone here. And I said, oh, okay, that was Tommy. Uh, Tommy Murphy at the yeah. time, yes. Yeah. And I said, that's yeah, you're more than welcome. I was thinking myself, yes, she is welcome, but she'd be there for one or two nights. And it's the usual, she'd be gone after two nights, won't see her anymore, you know what I mean? But I was very, very surprised when I seen the dedication and the input that she had into the boxing. We started her off boxing, and then one night I put her in with one of my good, what I would class as a very good boxer. And I put her in on a Sunday, she started boxing, and I put her into the ring with this boxer. And um, he went to walk on Monday morning, he was a painter and decorator. And when he went to walk on Monday, he told me this on Thursday, the following Thursday. He went to work on Monday morning and he said he had two black eyes. And all everyone in work was asking, what happened to you? Oh, he said, I was training with three fellas in the gym. I was doing a bit of boxing. And three of the fellas that done it. He said, I was afraid to be left to tell me it was a girl that done it. You know what I mean? And Deirdre was the one. <laughs> so I'm saying, 
we were all very proud of her at the time. We were looking at her saying, she's going to collapse sometime. But she didn't, she just got better and better, as we all know. And rightly so, she deserves what she's getting here today. It's absolutely brilliant and a credit to her. Amory, you were the part of the first ever bout between boxing between two women on the island, although it wasn't sanctioned 10 years later, it was going to be Katie and Alana Audley, Audley which was the sanction by the IUBA. But do you want to just tell us about your experience that day uh, on the 30th of June 1991? Okay, well, thanks for inviting me here today. It's a nice opportunity for me, I suppose, to reminisce on my kickboxing <laughs> boxing career, well, as short as it was. Um, as Kieran said, I'm from Limerick. And I got involved in martial arts when I was 15, starting off doing self-defence with PJ Venice in Limerick, and he also taught Kung Fu, so I went on and did Kung Fu, and then he did kickboxing. So I went on and did kickboxing, and I, then uh, PJ had heard um, Deirdre on the Pakenny radio show looking for a fight, so PJ said to me, would you be interested in, um, you know, doing an exhibition match with this girl and because we had a kickboxing tournament coming up and I said sure should we give it a try and PJ I suppose as a trainer was years ahead of his time and really promoted female part participation in all sports and um, so then on the day in question I think it was open air it was in the Shannon Arms it was a hotel at the time it was outdoors and typical Irish weather, it rained at the time. Um, I didn't know the extent of Deirdre's uh, training, how long she'd been training for, how long she'd been boxing for. Uh, as a kickboxer, I would have fought uh, barefoot, and so PJ had got me um, boxing boots and the singlet and the whole lot, and we only got them the Tuesday beforehand. But on the day, I just said, I can't wear them. Uh, you know, I'm just used to barefoot. But, uh, Deirdre had told nobody that she just came with her coaches that day and had told nobody. So I was in front of my hometown, I was in front of the home crowd. She came on her own, just with her coaches, very unassuming. Um, it was supposed to be an exhibition match. Uh, we did three rounds and at the end of it, we were called to the centre from the ref and the <coughs> decision awarded and Deirdre um, won, rightfully won the um, won the fight and just off she went again on her way and I suppose we didn't realise at the time the significance of it. It was 10 years later before boxing was sanctioned, female boxing was sanctioned in Ireland. Um, to me it was another fight, you know, at another tournament to Deirdre. It was her only fight at the time in Ireland but at least it gave her the drive to know that yeah, she really did want to do this and I think Deirdre went to England after that. And for, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then um, underground and birds, underground and birds which yeah, wasn't it? Two I can put another one now. Yeah. yeah, and then she went on to um, the States then after that and like it took great guts from Deirdre to be able to like leave her hometown and, and go off and in, you know, in a lonely place that's long before we have all the social media that we have now and to train, but I'm delighted. Now we're looking back, I'm delighted that we did play our small part in uh, yeah. opening up the world to boxing. I'm watching the girls here today. Yeah. Know, well done to them. And another two really unassuming girls who have done so well. And it's great to see, you know, it's great to see females. And again, as Natalie said, after the soccer last night, you know, the female is getting, and they're also getting the media attention now that they deserve. This is actually quite interesting here now, I'll show you. And this is why I want a statue here on this road. That's Soxburn. Soxburn fought for Ireland in the Olympics in 1956. Bronze medalist. Deirdre group just down the road. And she's a legitimate world champion. Deirdre was uh, inducted into the Women's International Boxing Hall of Fame in 2015. So like, Boxing World has like recognised her. But in the town, people haven't recognised that. Just before we wrap up, um, we've just been given some support by some people inside the boxing world uh, about, this, um, about this cause that we have. I just want to read some things from the press release from Deirdre herself. Deirdre's given some words to me. Um, so I cannot begin to express how thrilled I am about the potential of a statue in the place where my journey began. 
In my days as a young woman cycling through Drogheda on my way to the boxing club, I had such big dreams and ambitions. It was a very exciting time, but unfortunately my future as a boxer looked very bleak when door after door would slam short against women's boxing in 90, 1988. When Drogheda put the statue of Sox Byrne, I was in awe. I wanted to accomplish great things like Byrne's Olympic medal, but women were not allowed to box amateur or in the Olympics back then, which was hugely frustrating. I made the difficult decision to leave Drogheda, turn professional and move to the United States. Eventually I fulfilled my dream of winning a world title, just like my idol Barry McGuigan. However, it would have been in vain if I weren't able to break down barriers for other female boxers. So in the same way that I, inspired, that I was inspired by Byrne's statue, I hope that my statue will remind others that the most important factor in pursuing your dream is persistence is everything. Uh, I also have Katie Taylor, Katie Taylor's also, um, her team have been so supportive and all this, Brian uh, Peters has been constantly speaking um, with uh, Deirdre herself as well, and Katie has given her full support. I, I asked for um, a quote and a forward from Katie, and this should have been in five minutes, I got it back. So uh, Katie's uh, written to us saying, I'm delighted that Deirdre's contribution to sport is being recognised. She was a true pioneer for women in boxing, and one of my heroes growing up. She's been a huge support to me over the years, and it's women like Deirdre and her fights with the likes of Christy Martin who paved the way for myself and the current generation of female fighters. Uh, another two people, uh, Christy Martin, uh, the other half of the, uh, the female thriller Manila in, uh, in the, uh, on, the, on Mike Tyson pay-per-view. Uh, and she said, Deirdre was tough as nails in the boxing ring and together we changed the world of women's boxing. For that alone, I think a statue is only fitting. Deirdre Gogarty is a champion in and out of the ring, and it's a pri privilege to call her my friend. And just the final one I have is from uh, Jane Couch, MBE. Uh, Jane was the a pioneer in British boxing because she took um, the British Boxing Border Control to, to court for not being allowed to have a license, and she won the case in an open tribunal. Um, and Jane has sent me these uh, a couple of weeks ago. Deirdre really should have a statue. Without Deirdre, none of us would have been able to do what we did. And women's boxing wouldn't be in the posi position it is today. She is my inspiration and my reason for taking up boxing. So uh, that kind of wraps it up really. Uh, I know some, some of you there just want to get some questions in and some of you already have got some. But please feel free to ask us any of us questions at the end. And as I said before, the, the purpose why we, we're here is because we want to raise money for the statue in the town. And we're going to be moving forward with fundraisers. But the GoFundMe is now live and we can ask everyone to try their best to, to, to share, share the GoFundMe link as much as they can and make any donation they can, whatever, small or large. This is the main purpose of today, so that we can finally erect and immortalize Deirdre in, in, in the town. Okay, so uh, thanks very much to everyone for coming.